Peace, family. Vicki Dillard here with African Diaspora News Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, family, I have been discussing this particular story on different platforms uh, for a number of years now, actually, since the Trump administration. What am I talking about? I talked about how the U.S. State Department, the powerful U.S. State Department, sponsored nearly $600,000 to a particular program to study specifically Kenyan heterosexual men. They had five criteria. They said that they must be tough, heterosexual, aggressive, uh, unemotional, and achieving. Y'all think I'm kidding? Look at this piece, this particular piece. Is written by um, Abdi Latif Dahir. I want you to know that if you research this, you will likely find a little bit of information on it, but they've gone, it appears, they've gone to great lengths to bury this story online because this funding by the U.S. government in recent years is a humiliation. Now, this particular piece talks about how the grant, this was a grant proposed by the State Department's Bureau of Counterterrorism. January 12th, this is about 2018, that aims to fund a project that looks at the, quote, ideals of masculinity in Kenya and how they allegedly make men vulnerable to recruitment for fundamentalist groups. The two-year program, it says, $600,000 program says expectations of Kenyan men to, quote, be tough, heterosexual, aggressive, unemotional, and achieving it says are exploited by groups who quote, appeal to these characteristics and offer the opportunity to fulfill these roles. To counter this, the department said it will commission a study around this perceived link and will through activities promote male to male dialogue on issues of gender and quote, encourage stronger social and familial support structures. This piece goes on to say how on social media, the story drew criticism from both conservative media figures and Trump supporters who asked why their tax money was being wasted again. Right-leaning websites who provide a daily drumbeat to President Trump's administration also carried the story, including Washington Free, Be Free Beacon, Fox News, and Infowars. Trump has in the past stated that Islam hates us, has introduced the Muslim travel ban on refugees and restricted visa applications from a list of Muslim majority countries. And of course, you all know that when Trump was in office, he also said that African countries, among others, were S-hole countries. I want you to ask yourself this question. In light of some of the stories that I've been breaking down, be sure to check out, uh, be sure to uh, check out my broadcast that I did here on African Diaspora News discussing how there is credible evidence that links France to the creation of some of these so-called fundamentalist black terrorist organizations like Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab, right? Well, I discussed the fact that it is being credibly alleged that France was actually involved in the creation of these so-called black terrorist organizations in order to justify their presence on the continent of Africa so that they can say we're here fighting terrorism so that they could exploit the resources and the minerals on the continent. But they, the powers that shouldn't be in multiple Western entities, are very aware that there is a legit group of black males, black men, that are susceptible to being a force of resistance without the payoff, without the manipulation of the French or American and other Western countries. There was a legit group of males, among others, that's willing to push back against who they perceive to be occupying forces as we see happening in Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and others. Yes, I'm bringing this to your attention now because I was sounding the alarm a few years ago to say, why is the U.S. Department 
the U.S. State Department spending hundreds of thousands of dollars of our taxpayer dollars to study specifically Kenyan men who they can who have characteristics that are that are achieving, who are unemotional, who are aggressive, who are tough, and who are heterosexual. Think about those five attributes. Your U.S. government legit fears a black man that has these traits. They understand very well that a black man who is achieving an unemotional and aggressive, tough, and according to the government, heterosexual, is an actual threat to the occupying force. I want you all to find, to figure out, ask yourself, why is that? This is modern buck breaking. And when we see all of these different moving parts that's happening around the world right now and the resistance that's taking place and them, when I say them, I'm talking about Western powers wanting to squash and get rid of such traits so that they don't have to experience any real resistance to their exploitation and their oppression of the original people on their own land. Obviously, they want to be able to identify and allegedly neutralize those traits. Beloved, this is modern buck breaking. For those of you that are unaware, buck breaking was a process that the slave masters used as a type of technology to ensure that the strong black male that was on the plantations, the slave plantations, would not resist. So they engaged in all manner of evil, like sodomy, like all types of forms of humiliation, so that he would not resist his own oppression, so that he would not defend his own woman and children. I want you to think about that. My name is Vicki Dillard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Beloved, be sure to check out my website and all of my spiritual mastermind courses at clubvicki.com. That's club, V-I-C-K-I.com. And be sure to share this uh, African Diaspora News broadcast. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs>